Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Let's get started. If you're anything like me, your health is very important to you. I know you listen to the show for tips to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Well, I have some great news for you. James Miller Lifeology has partnered with BioOptimizers Nutrition. As an avid nutrition and exercise enthusiast, I thought I knew a lot. But after taking a 12-week health course BioOptimizers offers and implementing their supplements, I noticed a huge difference in my energy and my digestive tract. Since you're a listener of Lifeology Radio, BioOptimizers is offering you the same 12-week course absolutely free. Go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements to take this free course. Here is a sample of what you'd learn. How to get 70% more energy in 30 seconds or less. The ultimate key to high performance, health, and longevity. How to turn the tide against uncontrollable food cravings. How to select the most powerful supplements for you. How to stay lean and trim without sacrifice. The simplest and fastest way to detoxification and great skin. And much, much more. To get access to this awesome health course, simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements and sign up today. Once again, visit jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash supplements or simply go to jamesmillerlifeology.com. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you recognize that your emotional pain may not be what you think. I'll also be interviewing Dr. Hal Blattman, who reviews his book, The Art of Body Maintenance, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. This book will help you better understand your body, manage your pain, and stop depending on over-the-counter medicines. For more information about Dr. Blattman, please visit blattmanhealthandwellness.com. You may also purchase his book on his site on amazon.com or under the previous guest's products in the store at jamesmillerlifeology.com. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me anytime on iHeartRadio as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. Are you struggling today to find your purpose? Has mediocrity set in and you can't imagine doing the same thing for the rest of your life? Are your relationships struggling or you aren't sure how to make long lasting changes in your life? Then today, contact me, James Miller. I will help you recognize the areas in your life that are going really well. And then we'll look at the areas in which you are struggling. We will create actionable solutions to help you create long lasting changes in your life. You don't have to do this alone. Go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out the form and it will be sent directly to me. Don't let another day go by without finding your way. Your change can start today. Once again, go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com and click on the page, work with James. Fill out that form to get started today. Your pain may not be what you think. Did you know that when you're really sleepy, that your body struggles between distinguishing between being hungry, thirsty, or sleepy? (laughs) That's why at night, if you find that you typically crave a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of salty or crunchy things, more than likely you're tired. It's really important for us to be aware of that because if not, you'll find yourself eating a bag of chips and thinking, why am I still so hungry? The reality is your body wasn't able to distinguish between those three things. It's the same type of thing when it comes to our emotions. Our emotions are often so complex. Sometimes we think we're either feeling this or that. The reality is we can feel multiple things at once at the same time. In my field, there's a fancy term called a dialectic. A dialectic basically means you can have opposing opinions or opposing feelings and they both exist 100% of the time. For example, you're at a funeral and someone you love has passed away and you're so sad, but you think of a happy moment and all of a sudden you start laughing. Well, the reality is you're still 100% sad, but in that moment, you're 100% happy. You can experience both of those things at the same time. One thing to remember is that your feelings all derive from six basic emotions. Those emotions are anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. One of the main emotions that we typically use as a secondary emotion, instead of the primary reason it was supposed to be used for, is anger or being mad. Have you ever been in your car with your window down and a fire truck comes blaring by and that sound is so loud that all of a sudden you have a sense of rage or sense of anger? The thing is, that's really not anger you're experiencing. When we look at the fight or flight effect, for example, someone yells at you or someone comes at you in an aggressive way, we have that feeling of anger to defend ourselves, And that's the way we quantify it or measure it is it's anger. We all understand the fight or flight effect. When we are overwhelmed, we either are going to fight or we're going to flee, or sometimes we just freeze. If someone is threatening your family, 
you're going to have that sense of rage, that mama bear feeling that you're going to just defend them at all costs. And that is when anger is appropriate. Now, obviously that's an extreme version of anger, but when our physical health is impaired, our physical health is jeopardized, we will use that sense of anger to defend ourselves. However, the struggle is on an emotional standpoint, we often use anger in a quote, inappropriate way or disproportionate way. If someone says something to you that hurts your feelings and you come back with a really angry response, more than likely, it's really not anger you're experiencing. It's really a sense of rejection. It's a sense of sadness. It's a sense of insecurity. What I always like to have people look at is on a scale of one to 10, 10 is the most emotional you feel and one is the least emotion that you experience. When we experience a certain emotion, let's say we express it at a level eight, but it was really supposed to be expressed at a level four, the difference between that four and eight is probably disproportionate. So that's the unfortunate part is when we express so much anger at a level eight, it's really protecting us from the more vulnerable feelings we're experiencing. The reason why I want you to understand this is because what we think we're experiencing, if we tackle that, but it's really not what we're feeling, unfortunately, we've lost an opportunity to grow and develop. Think of a castle wall. The higher the castle wall, the more it protects the things on the other side. So when you have disproportionate emotions, it's usually defending something that's more vulnerable for yourself. So I really want you to understand that. My guest today, Dr. Hal Blattman, is going to help you understand that when it comes to your physical pain. He's really going to help you understand that the pain that you experience in your body may not be what you think. So today is a wonderful lesson to help us understand that our emotions may not be what we think they are. Our body may be telling us something different, but it's our job to slow everything down, to really be mindful of what we're truly experiencing, not what we think we're experiencing, but what we're truly experiencing. And when you're able to do that, you'll find that you're more in control of your life. Did you know I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 155 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know that many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show. So these episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode will give you a practical tool or technique that you can practice daily to help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, or go to YouTube and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. My guest today is Dr. Hal Blattman, who is one of the leading experts in treating myofascial pain disorders. He's here today to discuss his latest book, The Art of Body Maintenance, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. This book will help you better understand your body, manage your pain, and stop depending on over-the-counter medicines. Welcome to my show, Dr. Blattman. Thank you very much, James. It's a pleasure to be here. I am really excited about this. I was talking with you in the virtual green room, and this I've never really done a topic about this before, so it's going to be really exciting. You're going to be the first one to really set the foundation for help us really understand our body and to be able to overcome a lot of the pain symptomologies that or symptoms that we experience. So once again, welcome to my show. Thank you. Thank you. How did you know that this is something you wanted to study? You know, I didn't come to it right away. Mm-hmm. I, I have a couple of years of training in orthopedic surgery. I left that. I saw what we did wasn't working for a lot of things. We could fix broken bones. We could make them straight, but we had a hard time getting people out of pain. Mm-hmm. And then I, several years later, I hurt my lower back on the Nautilus low back machine. Oh, wow. And about five days after, I still had not had my first pain-free moment. Mm. And I was reading this orthopedic journal trying to teach doctors how to distinguish the person who's faking their low back pain and the person who's real. And I realized I couldn't pass that test. Really? That taught me that the person who wrote the article didn't know what he was talking about and had never hurt his lower back before. And that's what our colleagues were learning and teaching. that's interesting. And I thought, this is wrong. Something else has to be. That is so interesting. So you couldn't pass the test as far as... I would have been faking. And I still had my first pain-free moment from an injury four days prior. Wow. I passed the test. And I was pretty miserable. I was, you know, as bad as back pain gets when people say their back Mm -hmm. goes out. And then as a consequence of that, I played golf for 25 years Mm -hmm. with pain on every single swing until I learned how to make it go away. Wow. And this information is so powerful. It changes how we think about pain, changes how we find it, and people can do it themselves and they need to know. Well, this is going to be very exciting to talk about. I I was reading in your bio that you did the integration between the Western medicine and the Eastern medicine. That sounds like it's a great uh, medley of, of, I guess, ability to help people and cure people or treat people. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, it's really important because if you meld everything that we know and the best of everything we know, you've got a lot more to work with than just taking a piece of it. Sure. And so the more depth we have, the more we can help people. With Western medicine, what would you say typically 
I guess, hamstrings them from being able to understand uh, treating something differently as opposed to just treating the symptoms? Well, instead of looking just at symptoms, you look at root cause. Mm -hmm. Where is the injury that caused the pain? Where is the injury that caused the the difficulty that you have, whether it's in a biologic system, Mm -hmm. um, in your adrenal glands or your thyroid gland, or whether it's in your fascia and the strings, so to speak, that hold you together that you've been injuring since childhood that now are starting to make you hurt. Yeah, I, which is really interesting because I feel, well, let me back up. So the whole, the fascia itself, why don't you explain to my listeners what that is? Some people may not so have no idea So if that you is. pull a stake apart, just an ordinary stake, you'll see that there's a thin film around every cell, around every fiber, around every fascicle, goes around the whole muscle Mm -hmm. and goes through the muscle and holds it together. Those strings hold one muscle cell to the next and those strings hold your organs in place, hold your brain in place. That's the connective tissue that holds us together. And that's what we injure. The first injuries that we've had that are really of significance are when we were a child jumping out of trees, jumping off swing Mm. sets, and then you were either the child that led, followed, or watched the other kids jump off the roof. Yeah. And <laughs> I remember those we days. have those injuries to our hip tendons. Mm-hmm. And then years later, we tweak them a little bit again when we, we lift up a heavy bag of mulch. And the pain's in our lower back, and we feel this shot goes down our leg, but it really had nothing to do with our lower back. probably has nothing to do with the disc. It has to do with the strings that hold us together when we pull on them that hard that we started injuring as a child, and now we're less resilient. Now we're more inflamed from the food that we've eaten, and now this lights up like a Christmas tree, and we have back pain, and everybody looks for it in the back, and that's not necessarily where it comes from. That's so interesting. You know, it's, I'm sure many people who've gone to the gym have seen those individuals with the, with the foam rollers and they're rolling on top of it. And that's, you know, my listeners may not realize, but that is a way to manipulate the fascia. Um, and that's one thing that I've seen a lot of. And I definitely want to talk more about that in a minute. But is it, it seems like maybe, maybe because I've only really noticed it in the past maybe 10 years. Is this more of a newer thing that people is more in vogue or more people are really starting to think more about it in that way? I think people are are frustrated with the things that don't work, and the Mm. Internet has given us an avenue to show people things that do work. Um, The information that I've got, and my mentor was Janet Travell, who was one of Kennedy's physicians in the White House. She learned and started this in the 1940s. Oh, my goodness. Wow. This has been around a long time. It's just been hidden, and it involves touch. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the rules of CSI for pain, most of it's about touch, and if you think about it, you've been to your doctor, you've been to whatever diagnostic procedures you've had for your pain, has the doctor running your case ever really touched you? That's a great point. Millimeter by millimeter to feel where you're tender, or has your diagnosis been by MRI scan, CT scan, laboratory test, and we we, we don't teach how to touch, Mm. and if the doctor had touched you, there's a good chance he wouldn't have recognized what he was feeling. That's so good. And yet the massage therapist can find this stuff. Mm-hmm. Certainly. So if you could combine the knowledge of the physician with the skill set of the massage therapist, then you would have a whole different line of medicine, which is what we're trying to advocate. Wow. So when you go to try to figure out pain, the five rules we've figured out, the Blattman method of CSI, rule number one, you can't believe the pain comes from where you feel it. Okay. Your headache does not come from your head. Your left arm pain could be your heart attack. The pain in your knee might not even come from your knee. And the biggest proof are the people that have had a total knee joint replacement and their knee still hurts. Mm. And there's no knee there. Rule number two, contrary to everything we've been taught, it's not important what we think it feels like. Our brain cannot tell the difference between numbness, tingling, burning, itch, tickle, sharp, dull, achy. None of those things we've been taught to rely on as diagnostic are even important. Hmm. The distribution of where we feel that symptom is important, but how our brain interprets it is not. Is that more from, if I'm interrupted for one second, the inability to differentiate between that, is that really more based off of our perception, what we think we're experiencing? And that's how we quantify what that is? Part of it, because the, the, how you think about it, it is part of how you perceive it. But Mm -hmm. also the nerves that detect the fascia injury, they cause numbness, tingling, burning, itch, tickle, Ah, sharp, achy, and you can't tell the difference because Mm -hmm. they can send all of it at the same time. Sure. And there are people who are listening who go, I can't describe my pain because I feel all of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that happens too. 
Sure. So if you can't believe those two things, rule number three is what you can believe. You can believe that specifically where you are tender, millimeter by millimeter, as you, we examine your body together, that represents where your fascia is tied in a knot by your muscle cells or where the fascia attaches and weaves to your body and holds you together and you've injured it. Mm. And rule number four, the places where you're most tender usually generate most of the pain you think you feel. And rule number five, if you can find these injuries and get your body to heal them and unkink the knots in your strings, so to speak, as fast as you do that, you'll watch the pain you thought you had go away. Wow. And that is a model and a paradigm that really works probably better than 90% of the time, which is amazing. Sure, exactly. I mean, that, that's, that's a phenomenal statistics there. It, it is so interesting because, you know, really coming from, I remember I had, I torn my meniscus and um, I went through an or, to an orthopedic surgeon and had laparoscopic done. And you're right. I'm just in that whole aspect. I, it was never, I don't remember her ever touching my knee or even asking me where the pain was outside of it. I mean, in fact, let me back up. I, for, <laughs> first time I, I had something like that, it took me a year for them to actually discover it. The first insurance company I had um, was it was not the best insurance company and they wouldn't pay for certain testings. And so I went a whole year without, with having a torn meniscus. And then I finally went to another orthopedist who uh, found what was wrong, did the surgery. But in that meantime, when I would go back to the doctor, no one ever touched me. They just said, James, you're fine. You just sprained you, you know, you just, you, your muscles are sore and that's it. And there was nothing else there. So if I had known, I mean, obviously a torn meniscus is different from myofascial pain, but Going back to what you said earlier, none of the doctors ever touched me. None, none, none of them actually examined me in a way that is, goes along with your methodology. And I would even think, how could you put the forces on your fascia strong enough to tear a meniscus and not have a fascia injury at the same time? That's a great point. Yeah. So your pain is probably both. And if you touch either one enough, whatever you have left might be under your radar enough that your body stops telling you about it. Mm. You don't need to be perfect. Your body spends a lot of energy ignoring you. Yeah. For us to have this conversation, we spend a lot of bandwidth ignoring what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a similar fashion, if you can just get these parts that are injured healed enough that your body, your brain can put them under the radar, you'll move on and not even know about it. And most of the injuries you have in your body your massage therapist finds things that are tender. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I hurt there. <laughs> <Was> exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. So you're able to ignore them, but the ones sure. that are in your face are the ones you really need to work on. Mm -hmm. And when you quiet down the tubas, your brain will start to tell you about the clarinets. Yes. Because it's an orchestra. Yes. That's a great, that's a great metaphor. So for people to know this themselves, it's almost like if you got a paper cut on your finger and you're bleeding, do you hold it up in the air mm -hmm. and watch the blood drain down your arm? Do you run to the emergency room because, gosh, it's a tragedy? Do you take some ibuprofen and wait till morning? Or do you just put your finger on it and stop the blood? That one's easy, right? Mm -hmm. So you lift too many bags of mulch on Saturday. You wake up with pain on Sunday in your lower back. What do you do? You can't move. It hurts every time you, you wiggle. Do you go to the emergency room because God knows? Do you take some ibuprofen and wait a couple days? Or can you figure out where your fascia is tied in knots and where it's injured from lifting the mulch and shut it down just like putting your finger on the blood and stop the pain or make it a whole lot better and avoid that whole mess? And that's our reality. More often than not, we actually can do that. Which is very empowering, I'm sure, for many of my listeners right now because as, they, as they're hearing this, it, it, it makes sense like, wow, there is something I can do. I don't necessarily have to go to the doctor all the time, which is there's obviously a time and place for that. So I don't want to minimize that. But this is something that is exciting. I'm excited to hear more about that. I know in your book, you, the book itself, I think you've, I think the book was about you had 10, over 10,000 patients who've tried your methodology and it's worked. They've had great experience. Can you give us some of the techniques that people could maybe try at home um, sure. to, to help them through this? So the book teaches you where are the pain patterns from these fascia knots in your muscle. How would you know that the ones in your butt muscle send pain down your leg and send pain into your lower back? And the best way to know is if you have lower back pain, touch and see where you're tender. Is your lower back muscle tender or is your butt muscle out on the side more tender? And the place that's more tender is the one where that's crying louder. Hmm. We teach how to take that rubber ball. It's... um just a couple inches in diameter mm -hmm. and lean really hard and put pressure on those knots and squish them. And as fast as you do that, 
all of that muscle loosens, the pressure on the nerve endings in between your strings of fascia lessens, and your symptoms of radiating and gnawing pain could be better that fast. Wow. And you need to know. Yeah, that's really... That's really great information. I, I have seen many people with that, with that little ball at the gym or with the, with the foam rollers. And honestly, it hurts. It hurts. To, yes. <laughs> to use and the it. foam rollers are important yeah. because you have that tight ropey band of muscle mm -hmm. and you're asking that muscle to contract. And can you imagine that rope is tight enough? It's going to slow down blood flow mm -hmm. into the muscle. So now at wherever you are, you're going to start to burn fuel anaerobically way before you should. Yeah. And now you That's make a, a boatload of lactic acid and exhaust mm -hmm. and you don't have enough blood flow through the muscle to wash that out. So now the more you use the muscle, the more you need to use my little rubber ball or your hands or the foam roller and squish that exhaust out so there's room for new blood to come in mm -hmm. just to stay even. What we do is we make those ropey bands open up so the blood flow can get back into the muscle and we teach people how to stretch. Think about it. That knot in the middle of the muscle is where the pain comes from. And every stretch we're taught to do pulls on the ends of the strings, and that knot's in the middle. Mm. You pull on the ends, doesn't that knot tighten? Mm, sure. sure so stretching the way we've been taught doesn't work as well as we need it to. And we need to do an entirely different technique mm. to get muscles to stretch and to get fascia to stretch. Exactly. And, you know, I've seen some people with those foam rollers, and sometimes people don't realize that the direction of how they're rolling is probably incorrect. Do you go with the, like you said, the length of it, or do you go with the width of it? Like a, you think of like a um, rolling pin. Do you roll right. with the muscle, the length of it, or do you, roll, do you roll to the side of it, like you flatten it down? So that's one thing I think sometimes people don't realize is there is a right way to roll and, a, and an incorrect way to roll. Although, whatever rules you make for any of these things, there's always somebody who goes, well, do it the other way, it feels better. That's true, yeah. And I get better results. Sure, yeah. Now, if you take that foam roller and don't roll it, but you drag your skin, and you drag it really, really slowly, then the skin becomes the handle to the kinked strings underneath in your mm. fascia, and you can unkink them, and then real stretch happens. Oh, I like that. You know, I've done yoga for years. Um, I was, yeah, yoga has been something I've, I've enjoyed doing and I'm incredibly flexible, but I'm wondering now how much more flexible I would be should I actually start to foam roll. <laughs> In fact, I, I have one here that I'll have to try using again. It's been a long time. If you get it right and you drag the skin slowly enough for the strings to unkink as you go, the technique is also called rolfing or yes. myofascial release. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you're much better right afterwards than you would have been before. And then you get into food. Because if you do this work and your body cries out in more pain, or if you do this work and you feel better and it all comes back too soon, your fascia is gluing itself back together mm. from the inflammatory reaction from the food you choose. Ah, interesting. So it all works in conjunction, in concert rather. We send people to our website they can sign up for our newsletter and they can get what we call the do not eat list or inflammatory, of, or inflammatory food list, mm -hmm. the things to avoid that make us hurt. That's great. Yeah, and definitely well, at, the end of this, at the end of this interview, we'll, we'll get that information so people can sign up for it. I was, saw this video on YouTube. It showed the, um, the fascia underneath someone's forearm as it was being rolled out. And you could see the resistance of the fascia, but then after a while, you saw all of a sudden realign with the, with the direction of the muscle. It was a beautiful thing. It was, I, it, I didn't realize, I think, like I said, so many people don't realize what the fascia is. But to see that happen, and then the person go from that, the inflammation of the pain they were receiving or experiencing, and then once it was rolled out, they no longer felt it. But it was cool to see how the fascia resisted, and then it went back in line, and then you see it um, then meld, or I guess um, stay in that position. Yes. That's exactly right. And it's so much fun because if you can get the nerves in between the strings to not feel the pressure of kinked strings of fascia, mm -hmm. those kinked strings pushing on those nerves makes most of those uncomfortable sensations in the body, whether we call it numbness or burning or pain. And when you feel that string between your shoulder blade, that corner in your back and goes up your neck, you really have a string of fascia doing that to you that can tighten and contract. Wow. Because fascia fibers have muscle fibers inside them, and they can contract just like muscle. Not in a voluntary way. They contract slowly over an hour and a half, mm. and then they release slowly over an hour and a half, and we haven't really defined what buttons we can push to make that happen. Oh, interesting. 
Well, Dr. Halbelt, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on my show. This is very fascinating. I'm definitely going to check out your book as well because there's so much I've learned in this conversation, but so much more I need to learn. If my listeners would like to find out more information about you, to purchase your book, The Art of Body Maintenance, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief, maybe sign up for your newsletter. Where would they find this information online? Our website is Blatman Health and Wellness, all spelled out, dot com. We're in Cincinnati, Ohio. We see patients there um, on a regular basis. We're also in Manhattan at uh, 20 East 46th Street in the middle of Midtown. We're there about once a month. And once or twice a year, we also go to Seattle. Excellent. Okay. And your book can also be purchased on Amazon? The book can be purchased on Amazon, but if you want that rubber ball, come to the website to get that. And we have an 800 number if people want to call us, 844 282 8900. Excellent. Well, once again, thank you so much. My listeners know that if uh, they're not able to find your, your book online, simply go to my website in the store under the previous guest's products, and you can find Dr. Blattman's book. One more time, The Art of Body Maintenance, Winner's Guide to Pain Relief. Dr. Blattman, thank you once again for your time. I really appreciate it. James, thank you. Have a wonderful day. I also want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with us today, or please go to my website where you may sign up for my free newsletter, watch my YouTube episodes, read the articles I've written specifically for you, or you may enroll in the Lifeology Academy where you can take self-directed courses which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. If you'd like to personally work with me, be a guest on or advertise on this show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Once again, thank you so much for your support and I'll talk to you soon.